Hello friends, it's Elle here. So, Cody and I weren't able to record a new episode this week, so we thought we'd post a teaser for a fictional podcast that I wrote, and that Cody actually helped me voice. Um, it's called Woodlands. I started writing it for a prose and podcast class in college. I needed a voice actor, and Cody was able to help me out, and it ended up being the first project that Cody and I worked on together, so it's kind of special in that regard. Woodlands follows an English professor, Esther, and her fiancé, investigative journalist, Victoria. As they're enjoying a vacation in remote Alaska to celebrate their engagement and escape Christmas, they stumble upon dark secrets held by private universities across the Pacific Northwest. The secrets are too insidious for Esther and Victoria to walk away from, and they find themselves becoming more and more involved than they ever intended. And yes, the dark secrets are paranormal and true crime related. If you like the horror corner and are itching for some powerful, femme, queer, disabled, Jewish, and trans characters, stay tuned as we work towards producing this new series. Thank you so much for listening. As always, we look forward to hopping back into the horror corner with you next week. See you soon. Chapter 2 Don't go out unless you're sure you can get back home. Why do the goys have to play their fucking Christmas songs on every channel? Remember when they made us sing Here Comes Santa Claus in first grade and my mama pulled me out the next year? Special education wasn't working out for me, but even worse, they made a 50% Jewish classroom sing praise to the Lord our Father. That really did it in for her. Yep. Wish that got me out. Even bringing home holiday ornaments and asking my mom why we didn't have a tree wasn't enough of a red flag for her. I wonder if Jewish school does special education now and if they do it right. Babe, write that down. If they do, it might be the insurance I need to give you our firstborn. Right here, right now, in this car, on the way to Starbucks. We can name her after the treasure at the end of our journey. Wi-Fi hub. Oh my. Guess Frosty wants us to keep our eyes on the road. Overlook Pass remains closed today due to icy conditions. Snowfall is speculated to resume in the early morning tomorrow. Accumulation may reach three feet by Monday. Road workers are planning to clear major roads between Woodlands and Old Man's Ridge this morning to create a safe window for holiday travelers. Literally, just say Christmas, bitch. Hanukkah has been over for two weeks. Juan's isn't for another two weeks. Temperatures across the Malinora Range are averaging negative 10 degrees Celsius. Conditions through today are predicted to be clear. We expect winds to pick up again tonight to at least 13 miles per hour, growing more intense by tomorrow morning. Get your snow angels and snowmen in quick, folks, because tomorrow is going to be a doozy. Lenore Bazin will be closed possibly through Monday due to high winds. Don't want to be up to 30 feet high on a ski lift at 40 miles per hour wind, let me tell you. (laughs) Next up, join us for an exclusive interview with the notorious Sasquatch hunters from the TV show Monster Hunters as they try to uncover whether or not the Alaskan Yeti escaped to northern Canada since their last investigation. Oh my god, I have to hear this! No, I am sick of you and your Yeti shows. Fight me! Ow! Mm -hmm. Don't you dare hold my hand like you didn't just slap it. Oh my god, Esther, get off. I'm driving. What? It's hot to drive into snowbanks and die alone and afraid in each other's arms, right? I mean, that's one way to announce the engagement to our families without having to deal with the consequences. (laughs) 
I'm sorry. Was that too soon? No, I just keep thinking about my bubby. I don't know whether I should call my mom or not. She'll just be upset about the whole thing. Don't you think Catherine has already called her by now? Probably. God, that makes it worse. I mean, hey, if your mom hasn't called you first yet, isn't that a good sign? I don't know. What about you? Hmm? You said you already told your family, right? I told Leia and Uncle Mitch. Full disclosure, though, Leia actually helped me decide on the rings. She said you would like topaz instead of diamond because it's the same color as the dress you wore on our first date. Holy shit, that is so sweet that she remembered that. I don't even remember that. That dress was the second date, though, not the first. Which is why I didn't steal that line for the proposal monologue. <laughs> I didn't tell Leia she was wrong yet. I'm saving it for the next visit when she gets too cocky during family dinner and I need something to devastate her with. She was so fucking uppy to you about knowing you guys so well. I can't believe you remember enough to literally correct your sister's also impeccable memory. You must be really gay. Are you saying you don't remember the flannel I wore? Oh hell no. I was too focused on how much you look like a sexy, femme, androgynous Alex Turner. You know, as a, as a complete package. It was a little disappointing that you didn't sing the entire album of Subbering for me. Alex Turner wasn't all sad boy yet then. It was definitely still Avril Lavigne days. He was a boy, then she was a girl, with another girl, and then she became masculine again but still is a girl, with another girl. <laughs> That'll be the title of her second marriage book. But no, seriously, it was definitely Submarine Days. We had just reverted back to the real stuff in college, and you definitely wore a leather motorcycle jacket. Only because I was trying to compete with him. Even if I tried smoking ones outside of a bar waiting for you to show up. Yeah, that was hot until you started choking and I thought you had swallowed a macadamia nut hole and that you would literally die. But it turned out great. You took me home afterwards and we listened to Favorite Worst Nightmare and fuck. Those were such simple times. DC during Obama. Pre-Trump. Pre-having to explain anything to my parents. Pre-vegan pizza. Full, real pizza. The climax of 505 made up for all my experience. Mm-hmm. The good days. I see the Starbucks sign. Oh, shit. Oh, what? It's closed. What? Yeah, let me get closer to the sign. Can you see it? Due to short staff and the impending storm, we will be closed until Monday. Who the fuck do they think they are? What else is on this block? Um, there's a convenience store. Oh, it says that it has coffee and Wi-Fi. Really? It looks a little shady. That's because it's right next to the pristine gentrifying Starbucks. And it has a ramp. How cool, honey. Hmm. Okay, let's check it out. If we get pegged by an ice coal, it's on you. Alright, but if our jugulars are severed by a straight ice knife, we wouldn't have to tell our families. Okay, I see where you're coming from with the uh, nihilist positivity. This episode of Woodlands was written and produced by Elizabeth Ayers. The voice of Victoria was Cody Ireland, and the voice of the radio host was James Tretton. Stay with us for our scene two of chapter two next week.